The Youth's Instructor, November 12, 1896 Divine Grace in Temptation My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the Righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him, ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. The followers of Christ must aim to reach a high standard, and God has promised them help in this work. In His Word are many promises of His love and care. The youth who desire to be faithful followers of Christ will not place themselves on doubtful ground. They will not associate with those of a trifling character, but, daily depending on God for strength, watching unto prayer, they will keep their morals pure. They will withdraw from every circle that would lead them to be careless and dishonor God. They will write forbidden against the temptation to indulge in the use of tobacco in any form, to take the wine cup or to use any kind of intoxicating beverage. Such youth will stand as under the shield of omnipotence. They will be secure, defended as by an impregnable wall. Because they thus cooperate with the will of God, and obey the thus saith the Lord, the Holy Spirit is their constant safeguard. They are partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. In the books of heaven it will be recorded of them that they are overcomers through the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. When a youth thus arms himself with the high resolve to take the Bible as his guide, to form a pure and holy character, temptations will come. But if his mind is stored with the instruction that God's word affords, if he will take heed to the lessons that fell from the lips of Christ, he will not be overcome. When he asks for the aid of the Holy Spirit, he will not seek in vain. It will take of the things of God and show them unto him. It is the holy endeavor, the persevering resistance of the powers of evil through faith in the Redeemer that will cause our names to be retained in the book of life. The Lord would have us seek him with the whole heart, always placing ourselves on his side. In so doing, we shall overcome and shall sit down with Christ on his throne. Your companions may sneer at you for being so particular. They may refuse to see any danger in indulgence in eating and drinking. They may term your strict temperance cowardice and pride themselves on their own manliness, which will not permit them to sign away their liberty by putting their name to a temperance pledge. These do not know the dangers that lie before them. They boast that they have strength of will and know just how far to go. But they have one over them who is stronger than they, one who is armed with deceptions of every kind. They do not realize their weakness, and when temptations come, they fall into the net which Satan has laid for their unwary feet. In their own strength, these poor souls attempt to gather up their abused forces, but it is only to go over the same ground again until drunkard is written upon every feature. These things are daily transacted around us, and it behooves the followers of Christ to make every effort in their power, with the help which God supplies, to watch for souls as they that must give an account. Every effort made to break away from the power of a bad habit is manly. It is God's will that we should, by determined effort, 
rise to the dignity of a pure life, gaining in spiritual strength, and obtaining moral power through the exercise of the faculties which God has given us. There is joy in the presence of the heavenly angels when the youth gain decided victories in the name of Jesus. It is not the will of the Lord that any of his children should spend their time of probation in idleness. When he placed Adam and Eve in the beautiful garden of Eden, he told them to dress it and keep it. He did this for their good, deeming employment essential to their happiness. And in all the heavenly universe, there is no such thing as an indolent being. Each one has his special work to do. The angels are commissioned of God to guard, to encourage, and to bless humanity, to help us in every way possible to resist the temptations of Satan. They cannot but rejoice when they see the youth respond to their care and work in harmony with them in the struggle against satanic agencies. When they permit themselves to be uplifted from the depths of sin into which they have fallen. Yet there are some who, in spite of all this loving ministration, resolve that they will not change their course of action. They slight all these offers of mercy. There is sadness with the angels as they return to heaven with the record. They will not come to Christ that they might have life. The youth can learn from the book of nature wonderful things in regard to God's law in the natural world. God would have a comparison drawn between spiritual and earthly things, and the youth can grasp these things by studying the works of his hand. The tares have a lesson to impart. If the mind will be impressed, lessons may be learned as to the daily life of these objects in nature that will be of more benefit than any discourse from human lips. If the heart and mind are not perverted by depraved associations, light from heaven will illuminate the mind and there imprint its lessons of instruction concerning divine things. Who made the seed to spring up? Who tends it day and night that it may not die? Who gives it strength to develop and grow? It is the author of our being, the King of heaven, and he exercises still greater care and interest in behalf of his children.' 